California bill passed in September of 2021, AB 1273, which allows students in allied health areas to be paid for their clinical time in the hospitals. Essentially, this is being called an earn and learn opportunity for students in California. But many professionals in the field believe this will have a negative impact on patient safety, quality of care, medical imaging and therapeutic professionals, and accredited programs. This not only affects areas of imaging, including radiography, radiation therapy, MRI, and medical dosimetry, but other allied health programs like respiratory therapy, dental, etc. This includes 40 JRCERT accredited educational programs in California. For those of you who don't know what JRCERT is, commonly referred to as JCERT, it's the Joint Review Committee on Education in Radiologic Technology, and they set the bar on the appropriate educational requirements on a national level. It ensures that a standard level of quality is upheld by schools and that new radiation professionals enter the field with the knowledge, skills, and values needed to perform safe patient care while providing optimum images using radiation. Standards to gain JCERT accreditation for schools are developed based on the latest curricula, current technology, best practices, and include assessments for schools for improvement and accountability evaluated on an annual basis. I know what you're thinking. Earn and learn is great for students, right? Well, not exactly. I personally am as pro-student as they come, and I generally avoid politics on my YouTube channel and podcast, but this just can't be overlooked. You see, I opposed this bill when I learned about it and wrote letters in opposition to this bill. Why? The biggest concern here is that JCERT prohibits students from earning an income. This is in place because the school's objectives, which are focused towards student education and provide the standard education and clinical experience for a well-rounded graduate, may conflict with a hospital or clinical site's goals. In case you haven't noticed, due to the COVID pandemic, we are seeing record staffing shortages in healthcare across the country. Imagine you're a hospital with paid students in your department. The hospital's primary goal is always going to be operations, meaning keeping up with patient flow. This isn't wrong. They're just prioritizing the patients as they should be doing. But it is possible with staffing shortages that they will need to prioritize patient care. ER patients and surgical procedures often take priority, and now they have room to say, it's in the hospital's best interest to assign students to high priority areas of need, and students may not acquire that well-rounded experience needed for an appropriate education. Essentially, students begin to take the place of qualified staff and receive less supervision without the standards of JCERT in place. Ask yourself, would the hospital prioritize the student's education over operations? Perhaps there are some that would, and I'd like to think they would, but it's also highly unlikely for most hospitals. Keep in mind, in California, there are still state regulations that limit what non-licensed personnel can do, and the hospital would be responsible for monitoring that. This also leads to other concerns for patient safety, as well as liability. If the student makes a mistake, who then is liable? Especially if the student isn't being supervised directly or indirectly. Technologists need to repeat exams, taking what they've learned and knowing how to apply it without providing an unnecessary dose of radiation. Patients fall. It's an unavoidable fact. Will the hospitals back the unqualified radiation worker after an adverse event? Another issue with this bill is that it doesn't specify who's responsible for paying the wages to students. I can tell you right now, working for both a hospital system and a JCERT accredited radiography program, neither of those institutions have a budget in place for this. But let's go down this road for a moment. Option one, the school is responsible for paying student wages. Because school budgets are already strained, the only approach I can see to make this possible is to shift the cost of wages to students. Essentially, an increase in tuition for allied health programs to cover the expense of clinical rotation would cause the students to pay more, in essence, to pay themselves. It's insane, and it doesn't seem sustainable. 
Option two, the hospital is responsible for paying student wages. Keep in mind, it's not mandatory for hospitals to allow students into their facilities. Budgets are already stretched thin, so they'd likely have to opt out of some or all clinical affiliations with schools. Without clinical affiliations for student rotations, schools won't have students and won't be able to keep their doors open. Both of these scenarios may lead to the worst outcome I can think of, which would be on-the-job training for radiation workers. I know there are some rural areas that have always argued that this is okay and may even be necessary due to lack of accredited programs and qualified staff in their area. It's a valid problem that can't really be overlooked in this conversation, and there are imperfect solutions in place in some states. I've worked in a state where an x-ray license wasn't required in order for someone to perform x-ray exams. That state at the time said they got along fine without minimum educational standards in place. And I say to those people, you simply don't know what you don't know. Let's take this podcast for example. Sure, I've learned how to record myself, fix some of the noise issues in the background and make myself sound relatively clear on the recording after years of doing it, trial and error, and getting some help from other podcasters. But I guarantee you that a new grad out of audio engineering school would put out a better quality production than I do, and they'll do it more efficiently than I can. You won't see me applying for an audio engineer job in Hollywood to work on sound effects for the next blockbuster movie just because I know a few tricks for my podcast. That should be left to the professionals. Same applies to our field. I'll tell you a story about my experience in North Carolina, a state in which I both worked and received patient care by registered technologists, students in an accredited program, and one person trained on the job to take x-rays who was not registered or licensed in any way. When I worked there between 2006 and 2010, I taught for an x-ray program that employed full-time instructors in the clinical setting to supervise students. I'd been overseeing a student exam on a paraplegic patient, and we needed to transfer him to the x-ray table. I thought it would be a great opportunity to demonstrate proper body mechanics with a two-person lift from the patient's wheelchair to the x-ray table. So we parked the wheelchair adjacent to the x-ray table and adjusted it to the proper height. I instructed my student at the time to lift under the patient's knees while I demonstrated lifting around the patient's chest, placing my arms underneath theirs, and clasping my hands in front of their chest. We counted down from three to lift at the same time, and I bent my knees and cleared the wheelchair successfully. While we shifted the patient toward the x-ray table, I heard a loud pop in my left knee, accompanied by tremendous pain. I knew something was wrong right away. The patient was already over the table, so thankfully they were okay, but I was not. I couldn't bear any weight on my left leg at all, and thankfully there were two other students with me, and one of them was able to retrieve a wheelchair for me pretty quickly. I instructed the students to continue with the patient exam while I observed from behind the control panel and kept my eye out for another technologist to take over supervision of the students. Once I found someone to take over, I called the program director, or the school I was teaching for, to let her know about my injury, and she directed me toward an outpatient clinic for evaluation after some extensive paperwork. Once I was there and seen by a nurse practitioner, x-rays were ordered of my knee. The person performing the x-rays wheeled me into an x-ray room and asked me to climb onto the table. She didn't offer me help, didn't lock the wheelchair, didn't lower the x-ray table, or even provide instructions. So off the bat, I had some concerns about safety there for patients who didn't know what to expect. Thankfully, I knew how to operate a wheelchair, so I successfully managed to get on that table without killing myself. She watched as I lowered the x-ray table myself. So she took an AP view of my knee, then turned me on my side for a lateral view. After that, she attempted to give me verbal instructions to position myself for a sunrise view, which all of you technologists and probably most students listening to this likely know, is not something you should do for a trauma patient because you could further injure someone. And this is something I both learned and teach in JCERT accredited radiography programs. It's not an advanced level skill, it's positioning 101. 
I asked her to check the first two views before I agreed to bend my knee, and that really pissed her off. She walked over to me and grabbed my ankle with the full intention of forcing me into position. After verbally stopping her, threatening to kick her with my good leg if she didn't let go, and making it very clear that she didn't have permission to touch me again, she called the nurse practitioner to convince me that the sunrise view was needed. When the NP returned and asked what the problem was, I told her I refused to bend my knee until the AP and lateral views were evaluated. The NP asked the so-called tech to develop the x-rays. At that location, it was on film screen, so she did. When she returned, the AP view was fine, but the lateral was almost black on film. The NP left and asked the tech to let her know when both views were available. This tech shot a repeat, left the room to develop it, and came back with identical results. I asked her what her technical factors were, both for the lateral view on the first and second attempts, and offered to help her. She couldn't tell me. She said she just pushed the button with the knee on it, which usually works. I offered to look at the control panel, explaining that I was a registered technologist and an instructor, but she didn't want me to get off the table. So from the table, I asked her to read out any numbers on the control panel to me. She read out 77 and 20. So I assumed these were the KVP and mass selections. So I told her to disable the AEC. <laughs> she didn't know what that was, so I had to explain that it was probably the button with three squares on it in a triangle formation. I told her to make sure the light was off next to it. Then I told her to bring the 77 number down to 70 with the arrow buttons next to it and bring the 20 down to 8. She exposed the film and returned with an x-ray with appropriate density. I had just instructed her how to adjust her technical factors to perform a successful repeat. She asked me, how did you know what to set, almost seeming kind of annoyed. I explained to her that I'd gone through a rigorous two-year program to learn how to safely perform x-rays and patient care during my exams. I was also annoyed. I saved her the lecture on forcing patients into positions and just wanted out of there due to the extreme amount of pain I was in. I did manage to ask her where she got her training, though, and she informed me that a co-worker at that same facility trained her on the job about five years prior. She was taking x-rays for five years and couldn't perform a knee x-ray. She left me on the table and said she was going to get the nurse practitioner. I was left alone for about 15 minutes on the table with no supervision until they finally returned. The NP hung up the films using the light box on the wall next to me, just a few feet away. While she explained that she saw no fracture, I let her know that from what I could see about eight feet away, it looked like there was a fat pad and a ton of fluid accumulation in my knee, not to mention that I could no longer roll my pant leg down over it due to the swelling. I later had to cut my pants off. She went on to prescribe me naproxen, 500 milligrams, and said I should start physical therapy immediately today. I said, are you out of your effing mind? Excuse my language. <laughs> she continued to try to convince me to do the physical therapy, and I told her that it was a huge mistake. I requested further imaging to get more information about my knee injury, and she said no. She actually stood there and told me, if you aren't going to agree to treatment, we're going to discharge you and bill you for the visit, which likely won't be covered by your employer. So I asked what the process was for a second opinion, and she just referred me to my employer. She then told me I was free to go, and they took the wheelchair away to get the next patient. I hopped on one leg down their hall, through their lobby, and all the way out to my car, resisting the urge to make a scene, though I think enough people were staring at me at the point that it wasn't necessary. But I was furious. I don't think I've ever been so angry at another healthcare professional. I went straight over to talk to the dean at the college, and I asked her for a second opinion at a reputable location, and they sent me to the ER. It wasn't the ER of the hospital I'd been assigned to, but it was a hospital that we had a clinical affiliation with within our x-ray program. I was more than pleased to be greeted by one of my own students. The student was a first year radiography student in our program, and I knew him from the classroom. 
Despite him seeming a little nervous at first, he was kind, attentive to my pain level, my physical capabilities. He safely assisted me to the x-ray table and off of it, actually asked me for a history, and he acquired excellent images while using shielding and on the very first attempt. Turns out I had a tibial plateau fracture, according to the radiologist, and followed up with an MRI a few days later. I spent about six weeks on crutches to let the bone heal and was fine after that. I tell this story to my students sometimes just as an example of poor patient care or even that we need to advocate for the patient. My entire experience at that outpatient clinic was a liability and thankfully I knew my way around safety precautions. Otherwise, that could have ended up much differently. Any regular patient going in there for that type of injury is at great risk, and you better believe I complained about it later. This is just one small example of someone without a standardized curriculum in place for administering radiation and for patient safety who dropped the ball after five years of experience, mind you. Removing this for students trying to enter the field is going to be catastrophic. Thankfully, the implementation date for the bill approved was pushed off by two years. So as it sits now, these earn and learn positions could be in place by January 2024. Perhaps by that time, we'll have some additional information and possibly more solutions to this issue. But in my opinion, this has pushed the professional standing of radiology back decades in California a state which admittedly has been notorious for having some of the most conservative standards in the field. Despite the overwhelming opposition of not only national organizations, but from within the state, the educational institutions, and the many people like myself who wrote into Governor Newsom, it wasn't even discussed. Nobody opposed it at any stage in the bill's proposal process. Nobody even talked about it. It just got pushed through and people's voices were ignored. We still have yet to see how the California Department of Public Health, uh, specifically the Radiologic Health Branch, is going to react to this. They provide a state license and fluoro permits here in California. And then there's Title 17, which needs to be taken into consideration, which is a whole separate discussion regarding who can operate x-ray equipment in the state which creates a conflict that this bill doesn't take into account. But for now, anyone seeking to leave California after this goes into place and find employment outside of the state is going to be challenged in regards to appropriate qualifications. Right now, those in opposition to this bill include the JRCERT, JCERT, the American Association of Medical Dosimetrists, the Association of Educators in Imaging and Radiologic Science, the ARRT, American Registry of Radiologic Technologists, the ASRT, the American Society of Radiologic Technologists, the Nuclear Medicine Technology Certification Board, the Medical Dosimetrist Certification Board, and many, many radiography programs and faculty who also wrote into the governor in opposition. I think the idea of providing a greater opportunity to students and or some kind of financial assistance for them isn't necessarily a bad one. But the approved bill is just an example of the worst possible way to go about it. It removes all possibility of a minimum standard of care through accreditation and leaves the entire state as a community without guidance on education, quality and safety leaving the majority of those standards to be decided by the individual hospitals with no common denominator and who are already burdened with so much more. I don't put out podcast episodes here very often, but I feel like this is an important issue that needs to be discussed. And if you're in California, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you support the bill that has been passed or are you opposed to it? If you support the bill, I wanna know why. Do you feel like a minimum standard isn't needed for technologists in California? And who do you think should pay for student hours while learning before they become registered? Of course, this conversation goes beyond this bill in California, and it's being discussed widely among states that don't require any sort of minimum standard when it comes to training, education, or accountability. Let me know where you stand on this. Thanks for listening. <laughs>